JFT just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's weekly market outlook webinar for the week July the 6th until, the July, until July the 10th. I am Harlambos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD, and I will describe the most important economic releases and events on the financial agenda for the week ahead. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest, and then we will uh, jump into our analysis. Okay, this, week's, this week appears relatively lighter than the previous ones, with only a few events having the potential to prove market movers. Uh, some of those are the RBA monetary policy decision due out on, uh, on Tuesday during the Asian morning, uh, Norway CPIs for June, and Canada's employment report for June, both coming out on Friday. So let's begin uh, with Monday. On Monday, in the EU trading, we get Eurozone's retail sales for May, and the UK construction PMI for June. Eurozone's retail sales are forecast to have rebounded 15% month over month after tumbling in 11.7% in April, something that would drive the year over year rate up to minus 7.5% from minus 19.6%. The UK construction PMI is expected to have increased to 47 from 28.9. Later in the day, we get the final market services and composite PMIs for June from the US, as well as the ISM non-manufacturing PMI. The final market prints are expected to confirm their preliminary estimates, while the, the ISM index is expected to have increased to 50 from uh, 45.4. Although this would point to stagnation for the sector, it would at least be out of the contraction territory and could act and could add to evidence that the US economy is recovering faster than previously thought, despite hitting new daily records with regards to infected cases from the coronavirus. Now on Tuesday, during the Asian morning, the RBA meets to decide on monetary policy. When they last gathered, officials of this bank, of this bank decided to keep their benchmark rate and the target of their three-year government bond yields unchanged at 0.25%, noting that they have purchased government bonds on only one occasion since the previous meeting. They also repeated that they are prepared to scale up purchases again if uh, necessary. Since then, the only top tier economic release we got uh, was uh, the nation's employment report for May. The unemployment rate rose to 7.1% from 6.2%, while the net change in employment showed that the economy has lost another 227.7 thousand jobs during the, month, during the month after losing 594.3 thousand in April. The forecast was for uh, one, uh, 125 uh, thousand uh, slides. Now, with the, with the participation rate also declining to 62.9 from 63.5, this means that many people who didn't have a job have been discouraged to sign for unemployment benefits. If they have done, the unemployment rate may have been higher. What's more, in June, we had a new flare-up of, in, of infected cases in China, which uh, forced uh, South Australia to cancel its uh, border reopening. Thus, with all that in mind, it would be interesting to see whether officials are willing to scale back up their QE purchases or whether they prefer to wait for more data to be released in order to have a better picture with regards to how the economy is performing. Now, as for uh, Tuesday's data, Germany's industrial production for May, the US jobs uh, job openings for the same month, and Canada's IV PMI for June are coming out. The German industrial production is expected to have rebounded 10% month over month after tumbling 17.9%, while the US jolts uh, job openings are expected to have declined to 4.85 million from 5.046 million. No forecast is available for the, for the Canadian IVPMI. Now, Wednesday appears to be a very light day. 
The only indicators worth mentioning, although they are not major market movers, are Japan's current account balance for May and Canada's housing starts for June. Japan's current account surplus is expected to have widened to 1.088 trillion yen from, um, from 0 0.263 trillion yen, while Canada's housing starts are forecast to have increased somewhat. Now on Thursday, during the Asian day, we have China's CPI and PPI for June. The CPI rate is uh, expected to have ticked up to 2.5% uh, year over year from 2.4, while the PPI rate is anticipated to have risen to minus 3.2% year over year from minus 3.7%. Later in the day, Germany's trade balance for May is coming out and the forecast points to an, increase, to an increasing surplus to 5 billion euros from 3.2 billion euros. Finally, on Friday, during the European morning, Norway's CPIs for June are coming out. No forecast is currently available for the headline rate, which rose to 1.3% year over year in May from 0.2% uh, from 0.8% in April, while the core uh, rate is anticipated to have ticked down to 2.9% year over year from 3%. At uh, their latest meeting, Norges Bank officials kept uh, interest rates unchanged at 0%, repeating that they will keep them at that level for some time ahead. That said, they appeared somewhat more optimistic than previously, saying that since the prior meeting, activity has picked up faster than expected, the unemployment has fallen more than anticipated, and oil prices have risen. Thus, with oil prices trading slightly higher than, uh, than at the previous meeting, inflation rates near their May prints may allow policymakers to sit comfortably on the sidelines and reiterate their sanguine uh, language. Now, later in the day, we get the employment report uh, from Canada for June, but no forecast is currently available for neither the unemployment, for neither the unemployment rate nor uh, the employment change. At its uh, prior, uh, at its uh, at its most recent meeting, the Bank of Canada kept interest rates unchanged and said that, given the improvement in short-term funding conditions, it reduced the frequency of its term rep operations and its program to purchase um, bankers' uh, acceptances. Officials also said that the Canadian economy appears to have avoided the most severe scenario presented in the bank's April monetary policy report and that the economy is expected to resume to growth in the, in, in the third quarter. However, with uh, the headline inflation rate for May falling to minus 0.4% year over year from minus 0.2% and the core one sliding to 0.7% from 1.2%, it would need a strong employment report to allow Canadian policymakers to stay comfortably on the sidelines for a while more. From the US, we have uh, the PPIs for June. The headline rate is forecast to have increased to minus 0.2% year over year from minus 0.8%, while the core uh, rate is anticipated to have ticked up to 0.4% year over year from 0.3%. Uh, so that's it with regards to the uh, to these week's important events. We don't have uh, much on the agenda. As I said, the most important ones are the RBA meeting uh, tonight, uh, Norway CPIs on Friday, and the Canadian employment, before, uh, employment report also on Friday. Uh, at this point, I would like to ask if uh, there are any questions. Okay, we don't have any questions, so that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. I hope you have a great week and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again uh, next Monday. If you are interested in more detailed and frequent analysis, you can find me on our YouTube channel from Tuesday to Friday at around 7.30 a.m. GMT time. So goodbye uh, have a, and have a nice uh, day. Thank you very much. JFT, just fair and direct.